Hello friends, hello, welcome back. As I'm recording this little short story for us, depending on when you listen to this, I've already dropped quite a few little short stories, a little final chapters of several audiobooks today um, on YouTube and on the podcast. But um, we always do, well, we try to do every Sunday, Bringers of the Light Sundays. This coming Sunday, which is Mother's Day, and it doesn't matter when you listen to this, this is timeless, but in preparation for that, if you listen to this before that, around this time, we're introducing our new Bringers of the Light Maui um, operatives, so to speak, Poi Boy and Astro Girl. A while back, about a year ago, I wrote this short story, or I didn't really write it, I channeled in... <laughs> That's more how it works here. We do, do all of my books are done via automatic writing, we're just channeling. I don't plan the stories. I don't, you know, decide. I don't sit down and plot out chapters and all that. I just sit down, create sacred space, invite in my guides, invite in the spirit friends from these stories. I put my fingers on my keyboard and I just listen with my spiritual gift. One of my spiritual gifts is clear audience. And I just type the words that I hear in my head. And that's how all of my books that's are written. That's how everything I do on the show mainly is produced, all the channelings and so forth. So um, these books always have more than one meaning. They can just be listened to as a fun little story, but we do sit down with them, especially the Bringers of the Light series, on Sunday mornings and we channel in a chapter that is meant for the week ahead and then we pull out the metaphors and the meanings and we get special messages um, because that's how all that's how my work is aligned it's all done with intention for healing for bringing through messages and fun and magic and wisdom and child's play anything that is most needed on all of our journeys myself included in this now for our highest and greatest good so with that being said, um, this is the prequel to um, the book we're going to start working on on May the 11th. Um, we'll start doing the audiobook for that one as well as I bring in the chapters, but that one is going to be called Hula Hai. It's going to take place in Maui, Hawaii with my bringers of the light Maui because I just feel like going to Maui right now. I just feel like being in Maui right now, so we're going to write a book. So we've got three little short ch chapters. So we can introduce you to Poi Boy and Astro Girl. This is hmm, chapter one. So Poi Boy is K A Ali, Astro Girl is Bunny Witherspoon, and there are bringers of the light Maui. This is chapter one, Ali Akala Point. The ancient warrior watched with delighted humor. This time he would have his woman. The Poi House was a hot mess tonight, crowded with locals and mainlanders all there to try the ancient treat. Bunny was moving as fast as she could, but she couldn't keep up with all the orders. K.A. Ali, a a.k.a. Poi Boy, was serving in the mup as fast as he could, but he couldn't keep up with the demand. The clock over the stove cuckooed five past nine, having been incorrectly set to go off at five past every hour instead. The island breeze spoke to Kay, and he shot a quick glance at Bunny. How much longer she glanced back, two minds thinking alike. By noon, they would be off and headed to the surf side of the island. Aliakala Point was the perfect spot today. Trade winds, just so. The perfect way for a ride on the board. By one, they were on the beach. Bunny's brunch feast packed in a basket as Bunny stripped down to her bikini and sat meditation style looking out over the waves. There was Catamaran 44 My Little Angel cutting expertly through the outer surf bands. And out went Poi Boy on the new board that the wave guy Heil Masters had just made for Kay. Bunny watched Kay paddle out and wait for the right next wave. And from behind the palm tree, a wispy ghost soldier watched Bunny. He was a lonely death marcher. It was time he had a friend. Kay could, with his sixth sense and his master eye, see someone, or more like something, watching Bunny. He tried to signal to her, but he was too far out, and the pounding surf made it near impossible to yell to her. Before Bunny could turn around, the death marcher approached her from behind and swooped her up in an astral cloud, and then poof, he was gone. Chapter 2, The Death Marcher Bunny could see the light behind the Death Marcher, but she was somewhere else. The beach and the surf appeared like a mirage behind him. 
He faced her and spoke words she couldn't understand. <laughs> to him, an ancient warrior, the words were a proclamation of love everlasting. To Bunny, they were a long-forgotten dialect. She felt protected and yet scared at the same time. Just then a hand reached through the portal, grabbing Bunny by her bikini top and hoisting her out of this space. The death marcher screamed and tried to follow Bunny back to the light, but the spirits of the island surrounded him and held him there, promising that he could return again through the portal after sunset. How had he breached the light during the day was unclear, but that could be determined at another time. Chapter 3, A Twist of Fate Bunny hugged Kay and the portal door disappeared. She had a funny feeling in her heart, like someone had reached in and deposited something there. Hey, you okay? he said, holding her close, as the surf frothed around them. Yeah, just a bit shaken. I didn't know we could pass through like that. That's crazy, she said, shaking her head and holding Kay closer. Kay decided it was time to check in. He didn't know portal doors could randomly open either. Boy matcha, he said, taking her hand. Most definitely, Bunny said, grabbing her beach towel while Kay packed up his board. Her cell rang and she saw her mother's name, Delilah, appear on her phone. She liked the formal nature of their relationship and had called her mother by her name since her 14th birthday when Delilah Witherspoon had given her an all-expenses-paid trip to Maui to celebrate. Bunny knew it was really Delilah's way of getting her out of Primrose Mansion so she could bring in her lover. And as there was only one itinerary, Bunny was doubly certain of that and that she might never return to the place of her birth. She would go to Maui and she would never come back to the mainland again. So that is our introduction to our Bringers of the Light Maui. I hope you'll join me for Hula High, Bringers of the Light Maui. It's our book one of that series and all my other Bringers of the Light series, as well as my Thunder Rose collection, which is our Moxie and Roses audiobook collection. Um, I have a Shaman's Awakening series, and we also have, uh, we have so many, I can't remember where they are now. <laughs> oh, the Soulmate series, which I've just pounded out a ton of audiobooks for the Soulmate series. We've got book one and book two out there on audiobook on YouTube and the podcast, and soon to be book three, which is the third in that series called Rose and Sky. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you on Bringers of the Light Sundays or somewhere else among the interwebs. Thanks so much for listening. Take care.